This is Twit. Microsoft may be battling some government agencies over surveillance, but they're still working with other government agencies on other things. The US FBI and Europol teamed up with Microsoft and A10 Networks to try to take down the Zero Access Botnet. They've disrupted a major portion of the click fraud system, but due to its complexity, they do not expect to fully eliminate it, really, ever. U.S. federal court, not operating in secret, allowed the operation block to block communications and take control of 49 domain names. Europol executed actually legally obtained search warrants and seizure orders on computers related to 18 IP addresses. And Microsoft filed a civil suit in U.S. District Court for the Western District of Texas against eight anonymous John Doe's. And the Thanks for Nothing award goes to Golden Shores Technologies. Yay. Congratulations. The company took ID and location data from millions using its brightest flashlight Android app. Perhaps you've downloaded it. And shared the data with ad networks, but did not tell users, says the FTC. To settle the charges, Golden Shores has agreed to give users more control over what happens to their data. And there's an idea. Now, after tests in New York, Apple officially launched iBeacon in all of its stores in the U.S., the technology lets Apple know your exact location using Bluetooth. Now, before you get paranoid that a fruit company is tracking you, you have to download the app, in the app from the App Store, and then you have to give Apple permission to track you. iBeacon is already active in some Major League Baseball stadiums and Macy's as well. Spotify has an event next week, and the Wall Street Journal and TechCrunch report the company will introduce a free mobile music service. Right now, Spotify has a free desktop service, but members have to pay for the $10 a month level to get mobile access. Similar to the desktop service, the mobile service would be ad-supported and allow a limited number of songs on demand. A U.S. appeals court is reviewing Google's claim that Oracle does not enjoy copyright protection over certain parts of the Java programming language. Google's Android is the world's best-selling smartphone OS. The Java programming language was created by Sun Microsystems, which, of course, Oracle acquired in 2010. Oracle sued Google soon after, claiming that Google had incorporated parts of Java into Android. The ongoing issue is whether computer language that connects programs, known as application program interfaces or APIs, can be copyrighted at all. Instagram just sent out invites to the press for an event to take place on December 12th. Now, the invite itself was sent via FedEx, not email, and contained a wooden block with a printed Instagram picture and a slot on the back so you could hang it on the wall. Why a wooden block? Because Instagram has too much money. Uh, actually, they didn't actually say why they're doing it. But the company is reported to be building a private messaging service. Maybe we'll see that on the 12th. Trees hate that. Comscore's market share numbers for mobile are out, and Apple seems to be le leveling out at a cruising altitude of around 40.6%. Samsung inched up above a quarter of the market at 25.4%, while Motorola jumped ahead of declining HTC and LG in that order. Meanwhile, on the OS side, Android stopped declining and rose from 51.8% in July to 52.2%. Apple also nudged up from 40.4% to 40.6%. BlackBerry held on to third, though. They fell to 3.6%, just barely escaping being caught by Microsoft at 3.2%. And Symbian. Symbian still exists. Genetic testing startup 23andMe will stop giving health analysis information to new customers in compliance with demands made by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, but won't stop sales of the kits. The FDA issued the Google-backed startup a warning two weeks ago saying the company needs to stop selling those at-home testing kits because they require regulatory clearance. In response, the company put its advertising campaigns for its at-home testing kits on hold. A small amount of patent reform made it through the U.S. House of Representatives yesterday. The Innovation Act gives customers of alleged infringing devices more protection, allowing the manufacturers to protect them during a lawsuit. Yeah, right now you can be sued for owning a router that infringes a patent. If you bring an unreasonable lawsuit and lose, you'll have to pay the entity you sued. And the expensive discovery process is being moved until after a judge reviews the merits of a suit, making it less likely someone will settle just to avoid the cost of the threat. The bill does not address the rules for granting low-quality patents. It goes to the U.S. Senate next and is likely to be signed into law by the U.S. president. The Chinese government may be tepid on Bitcoin, but analysts at Bank of America Merrill Lynch issued a report saying Bitcoin could be a major means of payment for e-commerce. Bank of America thinks if Bitcoin becomes mainstream, it could be worth $1,300 a piece. The report says that currency says that the currency can become a serious competitor to, to traditional money transfers as well, but also notes 
the volatility of price and the questionable legal standing as downsides. And one more item, not one of the top 10 tech stories of the day, but of interest to this audience. Yesterday at inside.twit.tv, Leo Laporte wrote that Twit would not renew this host's contract. My last show will be the episode of Tech News Today on December 30th. Laporte wrote that Twit needs, quote, an in-studio anchor for Tech News Today and a news director who can help us build the kind of organization you can count on for authoritative tech news and information. Mike Elgin joins Twit as news director and will take over as lead anchor of Tech News Today on January 2nd, 2014.